Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 8th October 2016. The first article is related to the peace in Colombia. The Nobel Peace Prize was given to the President of Colombia, Mr. Jean Manuel Santos. Originally, it was intended to be a joint prize for both uh, President and the leader of the rebels. The leader of the rebels is uh, Timochenko. Now, later, it was confined only to the President, the reason being. There are many war crimes which are pending on Timochenko. Actually, in Colombia, there is a rightist and leftist fight. These revolutionary forces, they symbolized the leftist and government as symbolized the right forces. And in the process, in the peace agreement, which has been held for over than six years, it is about to end 52 years of civil war in Colombia. So, <clears throat> the major challenge was the opposition parties were opposed to the terms of peace treaty. It means they are not opposed to the peace treaty as a whole, but the terms of the peace treaty. So, what are the terms over here? The rebels, they will be allowed to continue as a political party. And on the part of the rebels, they are going to do away with this drug business, which is the major source of income for them to fight the government. And also, they will be given a liberal treatment, an easy treatment on various cases pending against them. So this particular point was not in favor of the Colombian people. So, but however, the peace process, both the parties agreed that, or said that, they are going to go forward with the peace process and peace negotiations further, rather than resorting to the violence. That itself is a positive sign. The present Nobel Peace Prize is going to give a fillip or a push to this peace process. The people have rejected the peace deal in the case of um, referendum conducted. But however, remember again, they are against to the peace treaty terms rather than to the peace as a whole. So this is going to be a positive testimony to the peace effort done by the President Jean Manuel Santos in the Colombia. Now, Mahatma. Now let us take the world view of Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru. Let's take the world view of Ambedkar and Gandhiji. So now, there, is a clear, there are clear differences between Gandhiji and Ambedkar with regard to the casteism. So Ambedkar has strongly believed that Gandhi has supported the Hinduism and the caste structure of Hinduism as division of labor. But however, he is also strongly inside believed that uh, there shall be upliftment of the masses, uh, which uh, the Ambedkar has strongly opposed on the reason that um, in India, the caste divisions, they are not occupational divisions. Uh, they are fixating the people to certain occupations. Here the occupation is not by choice, it is by force of the community, which certain sections are used to perform. So, and further to that, in Africa also, Gandhiji is being criticized for the reason that uh, he fought only for the issues of the Indians rather than the all oppressed in Africa. In South Africa, his movements majorly centered around the liberation and also the rights of the Indians, not onto the uh, oppression of the African people, the colored people over there. So that's why it has been seen that uh, Gandhiji's worldview do not consist of all the uh, kinds of oppression which is happening in the world. He fixated on the oppression of only the Indians, that is what is the uh, objections of many literary people in Africa. And in this context, um, we need to analyze the Mahatma's views in two, uh, from two fronts. One is, he was at very young age, he spent in South Africa. So he got matured over a period of time and his worldview has changed. And the second thing is, we need to understand the Gandhiji from the perspective and the context of the time. Now if you take, Mashvili wrote a book called Prince. In this, he told the prince that the virtuous behavior is not always good. So the, the virtuous behavior, what it constitutes, it has to be understood in reference to the context of those times, rather than understanding from today's context. So it means, Machiavelli is seen as someone who has promoted the evil, separated the ethics from politics, but in reality, he is talking about something in the context of those days. 
and based on the governance of those days. Sir. So that's why there is very much of subjectivity in interpretation of the actions sir, as we do not take the context and situation into consideration. But further to this, sir, uh, Gandhiji's and Nehruvian worldview appears to be different uh, and Nehru has compensated for this. Now, Nehru, he has participated in 1927 in uh, Congress of the Oppressed Nationalities in Brazil and then he also has moved forward uh, and he was part of uh, the, which is the precursor for the Bandung Conference uh, and he has taken forward the NAM movement. So, Gandhiji in the later uh, end of his life, um, he also has said that the, the movement shall be for all. So oppression of everyone shall be opposed. So by and large, anti-imperialism has become the agenda of our national movement. Now the next is, with regard to the Nobel Prizes in different areas. Now there is a Japanese scholar who has got the Nobel Prize. He is Oshinori Osume. Oshinori Osume, he got the Nobel Prize in Biology for understanding the process of autophagy and explaining the significance of this. And then we have got the Chemistry Nobel Prize for the three people from France, England and the Netherlands. They have brought in the nanoboats or uh, mechanic boats or mechanical motors in human body. So now, the lysosomes in human cell, these are known for this autophagy. So this autophagy, that means cell eating away its own parts, has been associated with the cell death, cell renewal in our body, cell aging, and all these processes. So in this context, there are uh, these particular mechanic boats are also, uh, we call them as molecular machines which are involved. So if the research of all these people comes together, there is a bright future onto the treatment of various diseases. Because these people are able to build the molecular machines at the micro level. If they, are get, if they get sophisticated, then the drug delivery mechanisms, treatment of cancers, understanding of aging, everything is going to improve. It will change the future of the medicine. Now coming to, again, the peace process, noble push for uh, peace in Colombia, that is, John Mike uh, Manuel Santos, he got the Nobel Prize uh, for the peace. So in Colombia, though the people of Colombia has, uh, in, has refused to the peace deal in the um, referendum conducted, by and large, the peace deal was re refused but not the peace process as a whole. And both the parties, they have agreed to go ahead with the peace process and negotiations um, rather than going back into the war. So that's a very welcome sign. And the present Nobel Prize for this effort, um, it is a testimonial towards the peace process. It acts as a, a push and also a motivational factor for the peace process to conclude. And coming to the startups, uh, what are the problems of startups in India? The government though has, is about to establish the startup fund. There is no proper funding is coming from various agencies, especially LIC's pension funds. They have sufficient money, but these are investing that money in the stock exchanges and also in the established companies. But if you take the West, in almost all the startups, the investments comes from these insurance and pension funds. So that's why the Secretary for Departmental of Industrial Policy and Promotion he said that um, the LIC and pensions, um, pension funds, a way will be found out uh, so that they can invest in the startups. Uh, and the second problem with the startups is they are mostly located in the service sector but not in agriculture and mechanic sector. So the Secretary has clearly stated that uh, the startups need to increase in these two sectors. Uh, and finally, the startup environment in India is having too many rules and regulations. Already, the startup policy has agreed to address these. But however, the regulations are providing for an uh, element of harassment for these. So in this case, government is expected to look into these factors of harassment. Now coming to Indo-Pak border. 
with regard to the recent yuri attacks if you see my previous videos and everywhere i stressed on one point so one is that is the border management in india need to be improved so first we see we need to seal the places where these particular things are becoming a possibility so it means that um, the fencing in india is not totally completed so the rajnath singh what he says is um, by 2018 the entire fencing of india with the pakistan the border fencing will be totally finished and the second thing is there are also the geographical limitations for fencing because there is mountainous regions etc so mr rajnath singh what he said is uh, that technical solutions or technological solutions will be taken up for these uh, geographical challenges these are the articles thank you very much